of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen, Christos, Anesti. We are so happy, we are living the joy of the resurrection during this holy 50 days. And just the church want to give us today a very great, very uh, joyful message to encourage every one of us so we can easily go through the hardship of this life. The Lord sent Moses, the Savior, to save the people of God and to give them to go out of Egypt. But be careful, that is not the salvation. That is the first point, the first step of salvation. Salvation is to go out of Egypt, but that is not the ultimate goal. That's not the destination. The ultimate goal is not to go out of Egypt. But the Lord said Moses to free the people of Israel out of Egypt and to lead them to enter to the promised land. So to go out of Egypt, that is just a step to reach the destination. So the people of Israel, they spent 40 years, they lost their ways in the wilderness of Sinai till they reached the promised land finally, thanks God. And that is not only the journey of the people of Israel, that's our journey. So all of us, we celebrated the Passover. We celebrated the Holy Week. We celebrated the resurrection of the Lord. Just the Lord gave us salvation, gave us to be free out of our sins, our of the kingdom of devil. But his pleasure is just to, to take us, to lead us from the slavery of Satan to enter to the kingdom of God, the promised land. So after 40 days, at the people of Israel, they spent 40 years in the wilderness of Sinai, and they, re they reached the promised land, the Lord did the same. He passed over death through his death. The bright Saturday, he passed with the church through the Hades, the Red Sea, the sea of death. And he freed us, he took us out of the slavery of the kingdom of Pharaoh to go to the kingdom of God. But that is not the end. He wants to take every one of us in him in to, to reach the final destination, to reach the bosom of the Father. So through his ascension, he took our humanity in him to reach the destination. <coughs> so the people of Israel, they came out of Egypt and they have to reach the eternity. They have to reach the promised land. So the, the question, all of us, we celebrated the Passover, we celebrated the Holy Week, we celebrated the resurrection of the Lord. The most important question, did you reach the bosom of the Father or you lost your way in the wilderness of Sinai? So the Lord led the people of Israel for 40 years from the slavery of Pharaoh from crossing the Red Sea till they reached the Promised Land. In those 40 years, the Lord was their food. He gave them the manna from on high. The Lord was their drink. He gave them to, to drink water out of the rock. The Lord was their protector. He overshadowed them with the pillar and with the cloud. The Lord was the, the guider through the pillar of the fire to lead them how to go in the wilderness of Sinai till they reach it, the destination. All of us, after the resurrection, the church will give us in every Sunday a sign that the Lord is the same, same as yesterday, today, and every day. So today the church is presenting the Lord as the one who will give us the manna. He is the bread. Of life through this journey from the direction till the ascension we need someone to care about our food the Lord is our food he is the bread of life next week we need to drink the Lord is the living water so next week the church will present the Lord at the water the living water we need someone to enlighten the darkness so the week after the Lord is the light of the world he can direct our minds. He can enlighten us. And finally, just before reaching the ascension, we need someone to lead us, the Lord. He is the way and the life and the truth. 
So during this journey, we're not alone. During this journey, after we celebrated our resurrection in the Lord, till we reach the end of our journey, we are not alone. The Lord started the journey with us by giving the power of his resurrection. And during the journey, he will continue to feed us, to give us to drink, to give us the light, to give us the way, so we cannot by any way lose our ways during this journey. So today, the church is presenting the Lord as the bread of life, as the manna. As in the last, in the Old Testament, the Lord gave himself as the manna to the people of Israel so they can live in the wilderness in us and be, be careful that it is, there is no option to refuse the manna. Because if you refuse to eat from the manna, it means just that you will, you will die. There is no other option in the wilderness to live without eating the manna. The same. There is no way, no way, there is no other option to enjoy life without eating the manna. So during this journey, we are receiving the manna every day on the altar. Just to my rule is to come early at the people of Israel. The Lord asked them to wake up very early. So I encourage all of you, come to the liturgy very early. If you have a flight, at 30. What time? You will go to the plane, the airport. So if the liturgy is 8.30, at what time you will go to the liturgy? And how you will be prepared to meet with the Lord, to join Him? So the church is presenting today for us the Lord as the bread of life. Are you hungry? Are you need to eat the Lord? The Lord is presenting Himself, Himself. He will not give us something to eat. He will give us Himself to eat. Finally, to conclude, the readings today, just to focus on this meaning, the Lord is the, is, the, is the food of our life. Without him, we cannot live anymore. Just in three points, number one from the readings today, St. John, the Catholic epistle. Number one, if we are in the resurrection, the resurrection is not an event. We are not celebrating the days of the resurrection or the events of the resurrection. We are celebrating the person, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So in the book of John, uh, sorry, in the epistle of St. John, the first one, <coughs> the first word he said, believe in the resurrection. Believe in the resurrection. In the liturgy, many times we'll say, I believe. Just when we finish the sermon, we say, I believe in God the Father. I believe in God the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the church. I believe in the resurrection of the dead. Many times during the liturgy, I'll say, I believe, I glorify, I praise, I believe. The, the priest will say, and the bread will be the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I believe. And will be the, the cup will be the, 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 the blood of the Lord. You say, I believe. So believe in the resurrection. Without believing in the resurrection, you cannot go and enjoy your life in Christ. You cannot reach the destination, the bosom of the Father. So believe in the resurrection. Believe that there is an end for your sorrow, for your sadness, for your depression. There is an end for the death. There is an end for every darkness in our life. There is an end. There is a resurrection. Christ is risen. That is not just a word. We believe in this. Do you believe? That Christ is risen. So that is the first point. St. John said in the epistle today, He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. So believe in the resurrection. That's our rule. If the Lord freely gave us the resurrection, if he if gave us freely to eat himself and to drink himself and to be the light of our life, what is our rule? Number one, to believe in this. I have to believe in the Son of God. Second point, from the book of St. Paul to the Ephesians. If you believe, you have to live. If you believe, the second thing, to practically apply your faith in your practical life. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, 
having been built on the foundation of the apostle and the prophets, and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. We have to believe in the Son of God. Number two, we have to live as members, as living stones in the temple of God to fulfill his will on the earth. Finally, if we believe in the resurrection, if we live in the resurrection, we have to give resurrection to others. Can you imagine what is the first miracle in the book of Acts? The book of Acts. After the, uh, the first early church, they received the Holy Spirit. What was the first miracle that, ch that the church did after the ascension of the Lord? Huh. When St. Peter and St. John, they ascended to the temple to pray, the prayer of the ninth hour of the Agbeah, and they found the paralytic man on the gate, the beautiful gate of the temple and they gave him resurrection Saint Peter said to him I have no silver I have no gold but what I have I will give to you what I have I will give to you in the name of Jesus Christ arise and the word arise we receive it twice in the liturgy just before receiving the gospel the deacon stand on this side of the altar carrying the cross and he said arise astacity Astacity, it is not meaning stand up to respect the gospel. The meaning be resurrected so you can hear the voice of God. The second point, or the second time, just when we spoke about the cherubim and the seraphim, the angel, the archangel, and the deacon said, stand up. It is not stand up or see who are seated to stand up, it's arise. Be resurrected so you can share the cherubim and the seraphim and enjoy saying holy, holy, holy. So if we believe in the resurrection, if we live the resurrection, we have to give the resurrection to others. So today in the book of Acts, we heard in us when St. Paul, he spent all the night preaching and praying and one called Eftichus, he slept in a very deep sleep and he fell down from the third floor dead. And St. Paul, he lied on him, and he prayed. And then he continued the liturgy as usual. And well, while he is breaking the bread, Aftichus lived again, and he came back to life. So that is the fir third step. If you believe in the resurrection, live as an icon of the resurrection. Number three, the Lord out of his mercy, he will put in your way many dead persons not to condemn them, not to judge them, but to touch them and give them life and give them resurrection. I am praying this for myself and for all of you, for the Church of Christ, to be a Church of Resurrection, to believe in the resurrection, to live the resurrection, and to give the resurrection to others. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, blessed is the Kingdom of the Holy Trinity.